Hello everyone, welcome to the channel. Hope you're all having a fantastic day. So today we're in the garage with Carex again. As well, it's lacking some protection. I know. I bought the base model and there's no skid plates. Now I did say in my initial review when I bought it, I liked it had a nice metal bottom. The problem is with that metal bottom is that while you get in the rocks or hit like a nice log or something, you're gonna go ahead and bend that bottom and it's not what it was designed for. And what people don't realize is in between that bottom and the floorboards is actually a gap or a space because your drive shaft goes right there. So if you bend this bottom or put a nice big dent in it, there's a possibility of drive shaft interference. So we're gonna remedy that problem today with some trail armor skid plates. So if you look here, I've gone ahead and I've laid out all the trail armor skid plates. Now I did go ahead and I bought the extra trailing arm guards right there. Now for those of you wondering, yes, it is upside down. But I wanted to show you something on the bottom before we went ahead and install it. So if you look at it, it's got five different pieces for the main body, but they're all labeled. So this one's Carex A, this one's B, that's C, we got D, and E. So when you're looking at the instructions, you know right where each one goes. And then on the trailing arm guards, it actually has a driver's side and passenger side guard. So this is very easy to install. Also, if you notice down here, there's lots of drainage available. All the holes here are recessed, so you have no hardware protruding, kind of like the other skid plates on the Honda Pioneer. So before we install the skid plates, I just want to show everyone what it looks like. Now there's about 350 miles on this rig. I do have some light scratches up here, but nothing big. With the trail armor skid plates, these skids will stay in place. Where other brands, such as the factory Kawasaki or the Tusk, you're supposed to remove these plates. As we go back, this is all welded on. This plate here will end up coming off. As you can see, it's plastic. And so will this plate here. Other than that, this stays the same. So let's go ahead, let's get these two removed and get the new ones on. So for disassembly of the plastic factory skid plates, you're gonna need a 10 millimeter and Phillips head screwdriver. So let's go ahead and get everything out. It says we're gonna discard all the hardware and the skid plates, but we'll just set them aside for now. Okay, for those of you wondering, let me show you what it looks like down here. So it's your rear vehicle. Here is the drive shaft to the rear. If you ever had to service this, because this is where the first skid plate was. And then the second skid plate was right here. And here's your main drive shaft as it goes into right there. So, so real quick before we get too far into the install, let me show you what the hardware is. Everything here is a 10 millimeter. You have three different bolts. Yeah. These ones is gonna go into the factory holes. You have inch and a quarter tech screws and some one inch tech screws and then the cups. And the cups are what's gonna hold the skid plates up. So let's get back to the install. The first thing we're gonna do is gonna come up to this metal skid plate and go just behind it. If you notice, there's a mounting point here, here, and here. And they give you a spacer. And if you can see, it's recessed. So this is gonna go right in there and then you're going to take your bolt, the only one that you can use without a cup, let's say 10 millimeter, then you're going to go ahead, thread this in here, and make it nice and tight. So let's go ahead and get started with that. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to do the rearmost skid plate, and it's labeled C. So what you're going to need is eight of these silver bolts. So we're going to do one, two, down at the bottom, one, two, three here, and then one, this half one, and this one right here. So we're gonna go ahead and get this put up. Now it does supposed to be where the writing is down and the indention for the cups go down. So it'll sit in like this, nice and flush. Let's go ahead and get that installed. Okay, so installing this, you're gonna put everything in nice and loose. I'm gonna start with the back and work my way up to the front. I'll snug these up, but it's not overly tight. Okay, so they're all in. 
still loose, I can still move it around. It's time to get the next piece. Now, I don't know if the camera's showing, but this is gonna be perfect for this next piece to catch on so you can hold it up with one hand a lot easier. So let's go ahead and grab that piece. The next panel we're gonna grab is this piece right here, which kind of sits underneath the seat of the k rax It's this main front section. And you're only gonna need one. It's not the self tapper. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna hook this bottom piece up right here to the back. It's kind of gonna hold it up. Then this one is gonna go up here. You're gonna keep it nice and loose. The reason you keep everything loose is so that you can adjust it for final fitment before you tighten everything down and you get all the pieces up there. So it makes everything line up nice and smooth and there's no gaps in between your skid plates. So let's go ahead, let's get this one on then we'll put the front piece up. So now that I have that center piece just held up there by two bolts, finally we're gonna put the front piece on right here. Now this is where it starts to get tricky. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take two of the normal bolts, the non self tapping tech screws and you're gonna put them back here. So you're gonna line up this right here and you're gonna go ahead and use the one inch tech screws and you're going to self tap through these four holes. Now make sure you don't over tighten these because once you strip it out, it's done. Then you have to get something a little bit bigger. So we're gonna, we're gonna go ahead and put this on and then we can get everything nice and aligned and then tighten down the bolts that we have before we start on the side panels. The first thing I'm gonna do before I even put the skid plate up is just hand start these so I have somewhere to slide the skid plate back onto. Now these are all factory holes, which are nice. Let me just snug those up just a little bit. Okay. So then we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take this, and let me show you something down here before we put this on. Let me show you real quick. So I have these on, everything's nice and loose. As you can see, it moves and these are loose. I'm gonna slide that in here. But if you look, you're not really drilling too hard. There's a hole, a hole, and a hole, and a hole. And those are where the one inch tech screws are gonna go into. So you don't really have to push too hard. And again, don't over tighten. Now I'm gonna start right back here. Now, if you notice, I did put safety glasses on because, well, you can have metal shavings coming down. So that's still nice and loose. Um, and I will actually come back and tighten these up by hand. I like to do it by feel. I just wanna get them started with the impact. So now, once I got everything nice and lined up, I see there's no gaps, I'm gonna go back with the hand wrench. And I'm gonna tighten everything up so that nothing moves and then we'll move on to the next step. Next thing to install are the boat sides that's gonna protect this area right here. So this whole install, mind you, you only need two tools, a 10 millimeter and a Phillips head screwdriver. So first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna remove these three Phillips head screws before we can put the boat side on. After you move your three screws, you can go ahead and grab your boat side, and we've got six screws to install on this. We have one, two, three, one, two, and this half one right here. So I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna start this half one right here. I'm gonna hand start it so I have something to hang this on, and then I'm gonna hand put the other ones in and tighten it down. So to finish up the boat side install, we're gonna go ahead and we're gonna grab three of the tech screws or self tappers, the inch and a quarter, not the short ones, the longer ones. And you're gonna grab three of the caps. Now make sure you have your safety glasses on as you are drilling through metal. There's no pilot hole for you on these. You're putting a whole new hole in it. So if you're not familiar, a tech screw or self tapping screw basically has a drill bit on the end. Now sometimes on these it can be difficult because you're drilling into a round bar or something. So you can kind of cheat. You can use center punch like this, it's a spring-loaded 
uh, punch. You can use a punch with a hammer if you have one. You can even use a small pilot hole as a drill bit. Just to get going. Even though this has a drill bit, it's kind of a one-time use. So if you get a dull or you use it once, you can't use it again for the most part. So let me show you where these holes are and let's get this installed. Here's the three that we've already installed. One, two, and three, and the three on the boat side. The next three we're gonna install is this one, this front one, and this one right here. So two that are overlapping. If you look up in there, there's no hole. I don't know if the camera can see it because it may be too dark. So these front two right here, you're gonna be drilling into a round bar. Let's see if it shows that. So you gotta be careful, that's what center punch. The pilot hole may come in handy, and then you wanna make sure everything's nice and adjusted. Let's go ahead and get these put in. Again, be sure you don't over tighten this. So I like to hold it right here so I'm drilling. Feels nice and easy. Can't line up the center. Got the little boat side on, now it's time to move on. There's six more self-tapping screws that go in this middle panel and six in the rear panel. And it's pretty easy to see. So you're gonna grab the one inch pieces. They should all already have a pilot hole. You're just gonna go ahead and you're gonna put the last 12 screws up. Then we're gonna move on to the trailing arms. Well, there you have it. If you're only doing the main skid plates, you are done. But if you're like me and you opted for the optional trailing arm guards, right here, well, you got a few more things to do. So to install the trailing arm guards, it's more tech screws, inch and a quarter, and you're gonna start at the front and work your way back. And the reason you wanna go in one direction is that it's gonna bend just a little bit. What I'll do is I'll get all four started uh, and then I will tighten them down from the front to the rear. Now on the bottom of your trailing arm guard, there's already pilot holes for the factory ones if you want to install it. The trail armor is half inch thick, where the factory is only 3 8 Now the factory does cover the sides, but from my understanding, it doesn't slide as much, and these are cheaper. I'm not worried about the side, I'm more worried about dragon rocks in the bottom. So let's get these installed and get today's episode finished up. So for those of you wondering, right here are the holes. And here's a fourth up here. So we're gonna start at the front, work our way back. Now the instructions do say to take this tire off, but you can get in there without taking the tire off. So you can see I just have it on some ramps. Go ahead, get everything started up. Just like that. Nice and loose. So I went ahead and I got the back one tightened up. Now we'll go to this one here. Make sure there's no gap there. Then we'll come up here. Like that. And then, nice and snug. Well, there you have it. There is the Trail Armor skid plate install on a 2021 KRX. Super easy, very simple. Honestly, it was easier to install this than it was the factory UTV skid plates on the Honda Pioneer. That was a three piece. This is a five piece. Um, I prefer the three piece, but man, this thing installed super easy, lined up great. So, uh, some tips, honestly, jack the rear end up. You don't have to, but put on some blocks, pull over a curb, something. Just get a little bit more ground clearance in there. And then don't over tighten anything. I'm going to go back, like I said, double check all my tightness. But if you over tighten one of those tech screws or a self-tapping screw, you have essentially stripped it. And now you're kind of, what do you do? You got to fix the hole or put a bigger screw in there. You need two tools for this whole thing, a Phillips head screwdriver and a 10 millimeter uh, socket and that will remove everything and install everything so enjoy have fun out there i hope you learned something don't forget to like share subscribe and until next time